Do you know what the acronym HALT stands for? And do you know why zebras don't get ulcers? What? Hey there, I'm Dr. David. On today's Thrive in 5, I'll discuss these topics and share some tips and triggers related to tackling challenges so you can learn to stress less. Let's jump right in and discuss their acronym HALT, H-A-L-T. Now, if you're like me, you've noticed that you tend to get a bit more irritable and stressed when your body isn't firing on all cylinders. The H stands for hungry. Most humans I know don't do well when their stomach is growling. When we're hungry, we tend to be a little bit more irritable and impatient and get stressed a bit more easily. So if you know some stressful things are coming up in your life, be sure to tackle them with a full belly. The letter A stands for angry. If you're already upset and irritable, it's probably not the best time to be reminded how much credit card debt you have, or it might be best to take a break from a conversation that's getting heated to bring your heart rate down so you can think more clearly. Strong emotions mixed with stress is often a recipe for disaster, hurt feelings, and regret. The letter L in the acronym HALT stands for lonely. If we're going through a stressful time and we don't have someone to talk with, stress can create a pretty quick downward spiral. In fact, research shows that one of the most helpful things for us during a crisis is another human being to process it with. The letter T stands for tired. Both our brains and our bodies eventually wear down across the course of the day, and as they do, so does our patience and energy level. It's pretty magical, actually, what a good night's sleep can do for our body and brain. So the next time you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed about something, the advice we often hear about sleeping on it can really do us a world of good. So each of us can slow down and learn to recognize when we're feeling halt, hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, and learn to recognize them in our children or partners as well. These and other triggers make it a bit more difficult to process stress in helpful ways. And here's a few more timely tips to stress less. Research shows that it can be helpful to talk through your stresses with a loved one or a close friend if, and here's the big if, if the person can help you process some solutions in healthy ways. But simply ranting and sharing strong emotions has been shown to backfire. It can actually make you more upset, stressed, and angry. The fact is, sometimes it's best to stop dwelling on and rehashing the stress in our minds and sharing it with everyone we know. It can actually lead to more stress, anxiety, and depression, not less. And here's some more tips. These come from a book called Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers by Robert Sapolsky. He shares reasons as to why some of us adapt to stressors better than others. First, he points out that having a positive outlet for frustration and stress can be helpful. So going on a jog or reading a book or listening to music is more helpful in the long run than drinking alcohol, downing a carton of ice cream, or even punching a pillow. Second, he echoes mounds of research showing that opening up to friends, loved ones, or even a counselor for support is one of the best things we can do if we've experienced a crisis or if we're feeling overwhelmed and stressed out. Third, studies have shown that having a perception of control can do wonders for us when we're stressed. When we feel like we have zero control of what's happening, and sometimes that's true, we can feel helpless, discouraged, and give up. In the book, Man's Search for Meaning, we learn about how Viktor Frankl identified a purpose in life to feel positive about, then imagined that outcome. In the Nazi concentration camps during World War II, they controlled everything about his life, except his attitude, and his will to live. He refused to surrender those. But this isn't easy. Our brains like to remind ourselves how overwhelming life can be, so when we slow down and even tell ourselves out loud things like, I can handle this, I'm ready for this, and I can do hard things, you actually train your brain for optimism, which is essentially the belief that your behavior matters. And the final tip is learning to replace stress with strengths. We're all born with talents and gifts and strengths. You can take a free survey to identify your top five signature strengths at www.viacharacter.org. I hope you'll print them out, put them where you'll see them, and when you get stressed, remind yourself of your top five strengths and how to use them in times of stress. So there you have it. Remember to watch for the triggers in HALT. Hungry, angry, lonely, and tired, and in the face of stress, instead of turning inward and giving up, 
Turn outward and get some help from others. Search for what you can control and use your strengths in times of stress. I want to learn. Show me the way.